Well, hello and welcome to Planet Cruise Weekly, where this week we're talking about the amazing continent of South America. But guess what? Today, it's our 100th episode! <laughs> So I'm Keith, this is Dan, and as we mentioned before, it's our 100th episode and it is all about South America. So Absolutely. thank you so much for watching uh, and supporting Planet Cruise Weekly every week. Now, uh, we asked you how many guests can Sea Dream Yacht Club hold up to? And the correct answer was of course 112. So congratulations to David Heinsohn, who got this right. So David, if you direct message us, your address will send you a bag of Planet Cruise goodies. So we're also going to put another question at the end of this episode. So stay tuned and keep listening very carefully. It's time as well before we start on the main episode for today's poll, which is up in the corner here. You'll notice it. Uh, today's question to get involved with the poll is which of the four places up there in South America is the most intriguing to you? We'd love to get your opinion. So which of the four places in South America up there is most intriguing to you? Get involved. Now choosing a favorite thing to do in South America is virtually impossible. Every exploration here is nothing short of enthralling, from learning to tango, diving with sea lions, or exploring Machu Picchu, to touring Rio de Janeiro, taking a mud bath, or wandering the rainforests, or even relaxing in the sun on some of the best beaches in the world. There is literally so much to do. So we're gonna look at some of what we think are the key things to do and see in South America. In its position on the southern shore of the magnificent Guanbara Bay, Rio de Janeiro has, without a shadow of a doubt, one of the most stunning settings in the world. As the former capital city of Brazil and now its second largest city, Rio has a remarkable architectural heritage. Some of the country's best museums and galleries, alongside superb restaurants and vibrant nightlife, in addition to its legendary beaches. First of all, there's the magnificent Sugar Loaf Mountain, which rises where Granada Bay meets the Atlantic Ocean. And its name, many people believe, is pretty much because sugar used to be sold as a moulded loaf, um, hence Sugar Loaf Mountain. Now, it's a great place where you can get the cable car up to this UNESCO World Heritage Site because the views are simply stunning. Now, one of our top tips for Rio de Janeiro is undoubtedly to go to the Tijuca National Park. It's the world's largest urban forest. It's in the city itself. It's 8,000 acres of incredible forest with its own little mini ecosystem and loads of indigenous animals and plants that are unique to the forest. So whatever you do, make sure you pop along and enjoy that. Now another point of interest is on top of the Corcovado Mountain, which is where the Art Deco statue of Cristo Redentor more famously known as Christ the Redeemer stands. The arm stretch statue was finished in 1931 and stands 30 meters high and weighs over a thousand tons. In clear weather, climbing to the statue is a stunning experience and the whole of Rio and Guanabara Bay is laid out before you. The beautiful and glamorous beaches are another huge attraction in Rio de Janeiro and they're part of the daily social and recreational fabric of all the Cariocas. The two most famous, of course, are Copacabana and Ipanema, and they're both easily accessible from the city. Now, as you might know, the biggest carnival in the world takes place in Rio around February every year. Everything stops as roads and streets explode with revelers and floats. Famous samba dancers parade their moves and their incredible handmade costumes. Keeping in the party mood, Brazil's party city, Rio de Janeiro, offers a vibrant nightlife with a great array of nightclubs where you can enjoy endless partying and dancing until the dawn. The city has some great dance clubs, lounges and bars where you can tune into a wide variety of music, right through from native music such as samba and foreign music to rock, hip hop and indie pop. As one of the largest cities in the world, Sao Paulo can at first seem a little daunting. Although once you get stuck into its intoxicating blend of culture, history and music, you'll realise that everything in this monster metropolis moves to a common beat. And before long, you'll find yourself dancing along. Now when you visit San Paulo, you'll dock in the port of Santos and you'll see from pretty much the cruise ship itself why this area of Brazil is so picturesque you'll see some stunning natural spaces dotted throughout São Paulo, including the Park um, Ecological, which is basically the Ecological Park, and also the Park do Ibapura. 
Now the city is also home to some of the finest museums and art galleries in Brazil, uh, with the Arts Museum of São Paulo boasting some of the greatest collections of contemporary art in all the Americas, while the African Brazil Museum, which happens to be located in the Parque do Apura, offers a fantastic insight into the nation's cultural history. If you're visiting this part of the world, a visit to Machu Picchu is a must. Enjoy the scenic Vista Dome train journey and stroll around the iconic lost city that stands 2,430 metres above sea level. Machu Picchu actually means old mountain in the indigenous language and it's a 550 year old citadel built by the most advanced pre-Columbian society and it's found in a truly amazing setting straddled between these two forest clad Andean peaks it's still preserved enough to be very easily recognisable as a great city. It's still mysterious because we, we know its functions were partly residential and partly religious and we're still guessing about its cosmic positioning and its academic importance to the Incas. But of course, it's placed in the Andes and we all know where the Andes are, don't we? At the end of your armies. <laughs> Considered by many to be the most spectacular site in South America, the gargantuan Iguazu Falls sit on the tri-border between Brazil, Argentina and Paraguay, and are among the greatest natural wonders to be found anywhere on Earth. Running for almost two miles, the succession of 270 individual cascades showcases both the sheer power and extreme beauty of nature, and is surrounded by lush forest. The Argentine and Brazilian sides of the falls offer contrasting experiences with the best all-encompassing views of the scenery available from the Brazilian side. Now these falls are inland, but cruise deals that include the Iguazu Falls fly you out to them and will give you a hotel stay so you have time to truly appreciate their stunning beauty. So next up probably my favourite part of South America, the Galapagos Islands, home to prehistoric iguanas, blue-footed boobies and ancient lumbering giant tortoise. The Galapagos are a magical and unspoilt part of the world and they're an incredible haven for wildlife. Charles Darwin, in fact, made these islands his home while he worked on his theory of evolution and now they form a protected zone where the fascinating species can flourish and be appreciated by fortunate visitors. The best way to visit the Galapagos Islands is by sea, and now there are a couple of quality cruise lines that offer expedition-style cruising to the region. Silver Sea and Celebrity are amongst the luxury lines visiting the Galapagos, and whilst you sail through the waters you will have the expertise of nature and geology experts giving lectures and leading excursions. There are many species that are unique to the area, and whilst you can spend the day in awe and fascination at these remarkably rare creatures, you can also travel in comfort and enjoy lavish cuisine and service that both Silver Sea and Celebrity are renowned for. But of course, the main highlight of the Galapagos Islands, despite the fact that amazing ships take you around there with incredible service, is the islands themselves and the incredible wildlife that simply you won't see anywhere else. And funnily enough, uh, it's one of the few places on Earth where there isn't that instinctive fear of humans. So, you know, you can get a lot closer. You know, you can even get selfies with the occasional, the occasional animal or, or water creature too. And if you get a chance to scuba dive in the Galapagos, one of the most incredible experiences you'll ever have. Now, we can tailor make your Galapagos cruise and combine it with a few nights stay in Ecuador's capital city, Quito, where we can even book tours of the city so you can make the most of your time there before heading off to the islands. Um, learn more about adventure and expedition adventure cruising by clicking the link just here. Often referred to as the Paris of the South, the Argentine capital feels distinctly more European than Latin America, with a significant migrant population that brought with it its Western traditions in architecture, food, art and fashion. From the posh streets of Palermo and Recoleta to the bohemian markets of San Telmo, Buenos Aires is infused with an unmistakably Argentine attitude that seems to embody the passion. Unlike the rest of the continent, which are famous for the salsa and the rumba, Buenos Aires is of course famous for the tango. And there are many passionate performances of a tango for you to get involved with at the uh, Cal Florida, or you could take part at La Glorieta or La Cadido. The city's other passion is of course football, with several Premier Division teams being based there in Buenos Aires itself and the city has given birth to many great players such as Lionel Messi and of course the hand of God, Diego Maradona. Now when it comes to one of my passions, food, Argentina is famous for its incredible beef and Buenos Aires is home to several excellent steakhouses or parrillas where you can sink your teeth into a prime cut 
La Cabrera in Palermo and Denis Val in Saltelmo are perhaps the most famous and both serve a selection of fine Argentine wines, most of which come from the vineyards in the foothills of the Andes. Usually around March time, Argentina has its wine harvest festival, parades, street theatre, fireworks and gaucho displays are held to celebrate the country's strong love of wine. Now another amazing part of South America are the Chilean fjords and when it comes to scenic cruising you can't do much better than these fjords. A remote land of splendour, beauty and the extraordinary, this is a wilderness that wouldn't look out of place in a Lord of the Rings film. Dramatic mountain peaks shaped by nature into spectacular curves and points pierce the sky like iron grey needles and blankets of snow lay largely undisturbed across the fields beneath. From the rugged and ruthless, you may find yourself sliding into a scene of wonderment, something you might expect to see, say, in a children's storybook. And then there's the iconic wildlife that you can experience, be it the dolphins leaping alongside the ship or the elephant seals relaxing on the shore. It really is an incredible place to enjoy the scenery. Santiago in Chile, founded by the Spanish in 1541, is at last rediscovering its Latin roots. Distinct creative districts have popped up across the city, along with a sprinkling of boutique hotels, world-class restaurants, and a thriving arts and nightlife scene. This is also one of the world's most spectacularly located cities, flanked by the Andes to the east and the Chilean coastal range to the west. To best appreciate this fabulous city, go to the funicular station at the end of the Pio Nono Street in the Bohemian Bella Vista neighbourhood. And then you can ride this rickety railway right to the top of Ciro San Cristobal. And it sits in the shadow of the Virgin Mary statue. And then from there, you can just look across the whole of the metropolis. It's, it's really magical. Owned by Chile, but sitting way out in the Pacific Ocean, the isolated Easter Island is roughly halfway between mainland South America and Tahiti. The island is popular among both amateur and professional archaeologists and is also a wonderful hiking destination with the Moai providing some excellent reference points for those who choose to explore the island on foot. What's more, Easter Island is home to a fantastic white sand beach called Anakina. Now Anakina Beach is a great place to relax and take in some of the scenery, uh, mainly because it's the only real white sand beach on Easter Island. The rest of the coastline is more rugged with volcanic rocks and no sand. And it's a classic tropical beach. Palm trees, coconuts, uh, fine white sand, crystal clear blue waters that are really calm and great for swimming. So great place to go, particularly if you're there with a the family. Montevideo, the capital city of Uruguay, conveys a sense of bustling activity with people out and about at almost any time of the day. And for this reason, it also has a reputation for being very safe. The side streets and alleys that hide a myriad of shops and boutiques are a real joy to explore. Boasting beach, shopping, architecture and history, this is a truly fantastic port stop off. Next up, Punta del Este in Uruguay, which is a real magnet for celebrities. Now it has a plethora of beaches, elegant seaside homes, pricey hotels and glitzy restaurants, which make for a stylish and sophisticated scene. Big names are right to flock here though. It's rather gorgeous. Tanning of all types is popular on the beaches of Punta del Este, and this is where it is really, really famous. Uh, there's great water sports as well, banana boats, jet skis, surfing, you name it. So if you're in doubt, head down to the beach, pull on your swim shorts, and have a good time. Well, we can't talk about South America without talking about, of course, the Amazon. Incredible place, the world's largest river in terms of water volume, and also one of the most mysterious and iconic in the planet, running from its source high in the Andes to the Atlantic coast of South America, with its incredible wildlife that team along the banks and in the river itself. Now, we have actually made an episode of Planet Cruise Weekly just on the Amazon River, so click here if you would like to see that. We've also made an episode on another amazing part of uh, South America, the Panama Canal, which is considered to be the kind of gateway between the North and the South of America. And it's quite simply stunning. So for more information on that, something I've sailed many, many times, brilliant thing to do. Again, click this link. The Falkland Islands is one of the last great wilderness destinations where your trip becomes an adventure. You will see penguins, albatross and petrels. Imagine a place that is so far off the beaten track, you have miles of stunning landscape, beaches and magnificent bird life all to yourself. 
Imagine a silence that is only broken by the call of birds and your own footsteps as you explore these beautiful islands in the South Atlantic Ocean. Being such a large continent, the climate in South America is varied and each area has its own weather characteristics. During summertime, December to February, the temperatures throughout South America can be extremely hot, reaching up to 40 degrees and an average temperature of around 35. The summer months are also classed as the rainy season with short bursts of heavy rain throughout the days. There are many cruise lines that go to South America, such as Princess, Pond America, Celebrity, Norwegian Cruise Lines, Azamara, Oceania Cruises and MSC. But it's such a large continent, you will have to check out the itineraries before you book. And most of the time, package deals will base themselves on where you're cruising to or from. So for instance, if you sail to Buenos Aires, you'll be more likely to also get a chance to sail to Antarctica or possibly fly to the Iguazu Falls. If you book a Rio-based cruise, then you'll also be likely to get a chance to go to the Iguazu Falls. If you sail, however, to or from San Antonio, then you're likely to get a chance to visit Machu Picchu. And if you really want to do the Galapagos or you really want to do the Amazon, you'll need to do a specific cruise that heads into those regions. Here at Planet Cruise, we can tailor make any travel experience you like. Just give us a call and we'll help tailor make an amazing holiday to South America for you. If you'd like to see a variety of different itineraries that we can do involving South America, click here for some fantastic deals. So hopefully that's given you enough of an overview of cruising South America. It's a big region, so we've only hit the highlights, but get in touch if there's something you think we missed or you'd like us to cover in the future, because we do love to hear from you. Now each week we ask you a question about traveling and the episode that you've just watched. And of course, if you get it right, we'll give you a mention on the show next week and you might get some cruise line inspired goodies winging their ways towards you. So if you're ready, today's question is, what is the alternative name of Cristo Redentor? Get your comments into the section below for a chance to hear your name in next week's show. So what's the alternative name for Cristo Redentor? Now, to contact us, you can email us hello at planetcruise.com or you can find us on Facebook and Twitter. Please don't forget to follow us on YouTube where you can subscribe for all the latest videos and deals and also all of that important cruise news. Thanks very much for watching. We will see you next week from myself, Keith, and from Dan. Take care. Bye.